Good morning. It's time for Coffee with Toffees, and I am joined today uh, for this very special TI coverage event uh, by Joseph Helium Cunningham and Gorgon the Wonder Crown. Uh, Basically, these guys are the best casters that aren't at TI. I was like, I gotta have them here so we can talk this morning about TI since we're the only ones willing to wake up. Um, how you doing today, Helium? I'm doing pretty good. It's early, but this should be this should be <laughs> fun. We'll see what happens. Excellent, Gorgon. How are you this afternoon? This morning, it is uh, early. I'm, yeah, no, I'm I'm doing pretty well this afternoon, this morning, whatever time it is. I'm not sure. So everything runs together. So you know, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, what whatever. Else? Helium sounds like he just woke up after a, a long fight. Morgan is not bound by time. He's, he doesn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is very early, guys, but this is a morning show for gamers by gamers, and that's what we're here for, uh, to walk you through the stuff you need to know before we get started with our TI day. So those are some introductions. If you are looking for these guys, you can follow them at Helium Umbrella on Twitter. You can follow at GodCowDota. And then, of course, you can follow at Toffees underscore Dota 2 for more information and other th great stuff that uh, I think you probably need to know about so just do it uh, that said let's talk a little bit we'll jump right into it uh, the first thing we're going to talk about today is the brackets and how the tournament works because it was a little bit confusing it's very different isn't it from last year yeah well I mean it's they're, they're just trying to make sure that they have as many games as many matchups as possible mm -hmm. to, to get the fans the most out of it you know like last year a lot of people were complaining like oh I didn't see my two favorite teams play up against each other because they, one or both of them got eliminated earlier on in the tournament. And this way, with the group stages, you've got a situation where, hey, you know what? If you've got two teams that you really just want to see play against each other, there's going to be a best of one there somewhere. Absolutely. All right, I don't so, know if it was confusing. I feel like it was explained true. pretty well. It is. I think that uh, some folks had a little trouble with like the how the play-ins were going to tie into the 16 and then where the seeding is going to go after the group stages. So I've got it pulled up. Uh, for those of you who don't have a guide or haven't checked it out, just go over to Join Dota. They have a pretty good international guide that they put up uh, about a week ago that's got a really nice layout for the whole the whole tournament. So yesterday was the play-ins, and we'll talk about the results from that. I know that uh, Helium has some strong feelings, as well as the rest of us, <laughs> about how that final went or uh, and who was in the final, more importantly. But we'll get to that. First, just so that you know, the end of the day, the play-in final wrapped up with Liquid taking out MVP 2-0. Uh, and, uh, yeah, spoilers. Well, if you're tuning into the show for TI coverage, then you probably should know you're going to get some spoilers. So, uh, my bad, but uh, there you go. Spoilers. So, anyway, Liquid's advancing. They're going to take up that last spot in the group round of 16. Today we go into the group stage, which is all 16 teams are going to play one another once. They're a best of one series, so it's none of that, be a, it's none of that best of three stuff. Uh, and the top two teams will advance to the upper bracket main event. So basically that means whoever is in the lead at the end of the group stage, boom, straight to the upper bracket. The middle eight go to phase three. The bottom six are just eliminated completely from the tournament. So it's a best of one where the bottom six go home. Um, now, I don't, I don't remember, is this the same group stage format they used last time with the top two advancing and the bottom six disappearing? Uh, honestly, I, I can't remember all the way back to a year ago exactly what they had going on. Uh, not. Everyone got to play on the main stage. That's what I thought. Yeah, that's that's what I thought as well. So that is the big change. Not everyone gets to go to the big show. Kind of like yesterday, where three teams that, I mean, honestly, three teams that came a very long way for the tournament all had to go home at the end of the day. Um after making the trip all the way out. So that is uh, definitely tough for them, and it's going to be even tougher at the end of this group stage when it happens again. So uh, for those of you who keep track, basically we got that. That's what happens at the end of the initial. Then we move to the playoff format, which is going to be three rounds, or two sections of three rounds, and basically your seeding in the group stage determines how you go into the third phase playoff, and then you essentially have to win your way into the upper bracket. So teams who come in in that, uh, what are we saying, like, like the 7, 8, 9, 10 ranking area in the group stages are going to have to play significantly more games to advance to the upper bracket than someone who came in third or fourth. Right, so, and there's, there's also going to be that fail. So, I mean, it's, it's a standard double elimination, right? Mm -hmm. So like, if, you're, if you manage to seat yourself in the upper bracket, then you've got a little bit more room for error in terms of how you play. And also something to keep in mind is that most, if not all, of the teams at TI have been 
practicing strategies that they've been refusing to mm -hmm. use in other tournaments, even big tournaments like ESL. Mm -hmm. they've, they've got tricks in their pockets and up their sleeves. And the teams in the upper brackets are not going to be under the gun, under pressure to use their secret strategies necessarily because they still have an entire other bracket to run through if they lose. Whereas the teams in the lower bracket might have to give away their game plan way earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe even if they do make it up, I mean, one of them will make it up from the lower bracket to the grand finals. And by the time they get there, I'd be very surprised if they still have a, a bunch of secret strategies. So that's, that's obviously a huge advantage to being an upper bracket winner is that probably most of your hidden secret strategies and, and game ifs that you've de developed those haven't been shown yet if you're an upper bracket winner. If you're a lower bracket winner, they probably have been. So the question what about is... the play-in winners like Liquid? Do you think yeah. they had to use anything that they didn't want to reveal to beat uh, who they have to play? They played CIS first and then they had to play MVP? Uh, I, you or know, they I, just sort of out mid-game, out-strategized? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I didn't watch all of those Liquid mm. games because I was covering the 1v1 tournament for Join Dota all day yesterday. Um, but, I, I mean, I had Liquid pegged as the winner out of that bracket the whole time, and I, I honestly, I would have been surprised if out of a best of five, any of, I, if Virtus Fro MVP or CIS had taken a win on Liquid, so I don't think that they, I think if they've got something, un, it, you know, up their sleeves, I don't necessarily think that they would have had to use it to, to get out ahead of that grouping. Um, yeah, it didn't really look like they did, they just had like a all-in push lineup, they had Rasta, Lycan, and Death Prophet on the Dire, yeah. and I think was game one, so like, that's not too inventive, it's mm -hmm. just hard to shut down, and I thought MVP did well to shut it down for most of the game, but some some mistakes were made as they usually are. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I yeah, I wouldn't say that they were out of like crazy box out of or crazy pocket stratting to get those wins. However, they definitely uh I think played a lot of push and kept everyone on their toes, which they weren't necessarily expecting. So I don't think they revealed too much. That said, I don't feel quite as strongly as Gorgon does that uh, Liquid would have dominated. I didn't think that CS and VP would fall quite as easily as they did yesterday. I thought there'd be far more of a pi uh, fight there. Well, I yeah, think uh, end of the day, to play. <laughs> right? I, <laughs> I was, you know, end of the day. I think in an inch or a mile, I, I think Liquid was probably gonna come with. They, they just they, as a squad, they have more opportunity to play with big teams than mm -hmm. anybody else that's there, right? Like they, as as a Dota gaming house, as a gaming club, mm -hmm. as they're called in the East, um, they they play with big names. They have the the longest TI mm -hmm. um, experience. They have the most TI experience on their squad. And while I don't think that they're necessarily, you know, like top six in the world or anything, I think that just their history with TI kind of gives them an advantage, if nothing else. Like, they kind of know what they're getting into. Absolutely. So, well, well I was going to say it for later, but let's just jump into it now since we're already talking about it. The uh, play-in from yesterday, the games that we watched, uh, the first game between CIS and Liquid, Liquid just, it felt dominating from start to finish, didn't it? I, I, it sounds like you watched the game, Helium. Uh, that one I actually didn't watch because okay. I was watching the World Cup game, which was more ridiculous oh, than that was... any, anything that happened yesterday in yeah. TI4. Um, but yeah, it didn't seem like they had too much trouble, and like I was saying earlier, you can see here on Joint Dota Black saying that they didn't play for 44 days because they did have all the visa issues, which took, yeah. what, four attempts to sort out, which yeah. seems stupid. Um, but what are you going to do? Yeah. That whole process is kind of stupid. Yeah. yeah. It just, it seemed, you know, I watched all the games yesterday and it seemed like they were, like he said, out of sorts, out of practice, their communication wasn't there. And Liquid, like Gorgon brought up, a team that constantly scrims and is constantly working just took it to them and kept the pressure up, never let CIS breathe. And I think that that was their key to victory as they had marched on to the finals. And it was it was pretty resounding march forwards, so I'm not going to lie. So then we had a VP, MVP. Now here's a game where a lot of the casters, when you watch the actual panel, and we'll talk about the channels in a while, I think Greg was the only person on the analyst, analyst's paddle, panel, I can never say analyst's panel, that, uh, <laughs> that said MVP might come out ahead on this fight. Everybody else thought Virtuous Pro was going to be a, walk, a, a knockdown walkthrough. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm actually, once again, I was not terrifically surprised. I mean, MVP against VP, is, that is an upset. I'm not mm -hmm. going to say it's not. 
But out of all of the matches that were pegged out, MVP versus VP was the one that I had picked out as an upset. Somebody asked me who I would bet on if mm. I were trying to find an underdog that I thought had better odds than they were being given on that uh, to lounge. And, um, and, and I had said MVP, VP is that's the one where an upset is really possible. Like that is the one that I would really expect to see something happen. And, you know, it's just VP's communication is not, has not been there for a while. Uh, they, they like to run in and be overly aggressive in situations where they just can't handle themselves. And I think MVP as a play style can really capitalize on that. So. They did very, very well. So we'll talk, move that MVP forward to the game against Liquid. Um, I know that <laughs> Helium said he was going to be mad this morning when we talked about this game in particular. What, what, what are you talking about when you said that last night when we were chatting? Oh, I think I was just going to be angry because this is so early, but I'm glad I got up. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I, the, I use the word cheesy a lot, I guess, because I played StarCraft a lot back in the day. Uh, but the, the Lycan, Rasta, and Death Prophet, all the Dyer, is a bit ridiculous. And it's not like you can really ban all of that. I guess you could ban the Lycan, which maybe would have been smart. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they were targeting maybe Void and Brewmaster and some other heroes. But I thought MVP did a really good job, and I think that was game one of dealing with that push. Yeah. And they were actually up in towers going into like 10, 15 minutes, but then like a couple of mistakes were made in the mid game, which Liquid prides themselves on having more experience. So of course that sort of happened, and Liquid was able to get away with game one. And then game two, I didn't really focus on as much. I was like playing Final Fantasy VII and watching <laughs> at the same time. But yeah, I don't I mean, know. it was also pretty close, though I think. It was. It was definitely more of a game than the first two were, I think. There was no real runaway. Liquid did use, I guess what a lot of people would call a cheese strat, and it does frustrate some, but i got to be honest, when there's a potential to get into a $10 million tournament on the line uh, and there's a group stage waiting where there's more room for error, I would do whatever I had to to get into that prize pool. Yeah, I mean, just getting the 14th place gets you twenty one grand, which is exactly. more than like most tournaments, so... Here, here's the deal with, with the cheese strat argument, too. And this is something people say against Alliance a lot as well. Like, oh, they play rat Dota. They, they're not real Dota players. Like, it's just looking at a cheese strat, if it works, then it's a good strategy. And the fact of the matter is what Liquid did against MVP Phoenix mm -hmm. is not going to be a strategy that's going to get them through the international because yeah, sure. Tier 1 pro teams know how to handle that. The fact that... We had an almost all physical damage team, and there was no real consideration at like an Omni Knight to come out, mm. for example. Like just because well, it's no one picks Omni anyways, that would right. be pretty bold. But I, I mean, I, I think MVP. This was the time, right? This was yeah. the game they needed to do something to that would break meta and get them out. Um, they only grabbed one. Well, I guess they had the dazzle as well, so they had two-ish heals, mm -hmm. but they had no physical damage block whatsoever. They had no way to, to heal up their towers, and they didn't have a harder late-game carry than their opponent. Like, I just, uh, just looking at the general draft, I think that they pretty clearly got out drafted. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Wisp really made their Bristleback pick shine, and then when Wisp got banned out, it just wasn't as apparent. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and that I think is the key to the play-ins. And what we're going to see from Liquid in the tournaments is Liquid drafted really, really strong strategies from the get-go in both of their, I guess, all four of their games and uh, stuck to the strategy. They never really deviated from it. They didn't get distracted. Even when they say we're struggling against MVP in the early mid-game, they just stuck to their guns and then came out with guns blazing. And, and it was a very, very strong. I thought it was a great showing from them, and I was actually really impressed. I, to see the, what do you want to call them, the third place U.S. team step up and really take it to some of the better teams or some really good teams out there. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm an American. I'm from the U.S. and I'm happy to see another American team oh, show base, baseball analogy team. incoming. Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy to see Liquid returning to the TI. I, I, they were stamped on my compendium last year. They're not going to be stamped on it this year, but I, I'm happy to see them there. I had them stamped last year as well, and also not this year. Nice. Well, I, uh, I, don't, I don't even know if I have a stamp on there just yet. I'll have to go check. I don't know what we're talking about with that, but uh, we'll move on. So that was yesterday's <laughs> games, and uh, in the interest of time, we'll keep moving forward. Quick chat about I want to get your opinions on the, uh, the way that they're doing the casting for this tournament. So a couple of things to talk about. There are multiple channels, right? There are a ton 
of channels to watch TI. Uh, the multicast channel is probably the main one, and that is the panel board uh, that's being run by Shivar, uh, What is Hip, Ryu Uberus, and Draskal. Um, and they're basically take covering all of the games at once, um, as well as yesterday the one-on-one -on -one tournament um, in an analysis format, which I think is an interesting new thing that's been showing up more and more in Dota, especially this season. Um, did you guys have a chance to watch any of the multicast? What did you think of the panel? I didn't. I didn't see it at all. Like, like I said, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. spending all of the international working for Join Dota, mm -hmm. um, so I'm constantly writing out analysis for their analysis pages, um, or editing somebody else's analysis or whatever. Um, very involved in that, and then I'm of course trying to to field some some issues with my new position on High Ground TV as well. So I'm I'm very busy. Usually when I'm watching, I'm watching in the Dota 2 client, so that I can actually be writing analysis myself. Um, that, that being said, I do like all of the casting options that I have in the client while I'm writing, and I'm an absolute, like, addict fan of the Noob channel. I find mm. it very hilarious, and <laughs> yeah. um, Sun's fan especially has been doing a really good Corbin's learning job. things over there, guys. Learning yeah, things. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm almost going to be a big boy caster pretty soon. But I learned that Lycan is a physical damage hero the other day. I was very happy. <laughs> yeah, I saw some people uh, saying that the noob stream is better than all the other streams in terms of casting as well, at least when Purge and Suns fan were uh, at the helm. Yeah, no, for I the... think those two would do an excellent job. They, they do a great job. Um, and for those of you who don't know, the Noob stream is actually, it's a lot of fun. It's a great place to sit. And the idea is it's a stream that's more accessible. When you watch the mainstream, um, there's all kinds of acronyms and things that are thrown out constantly and aggressively that we take for granted as people who are always playing the game that a newcomer might not. And a lot, TI is the gateway to new players. I know that I came through a TI. A lot of my friends came through a TI. Uh, so it's just an easier stream to stick with. And I think it was really smooth yesterday. The first game, they had a hard time, like, uh, Sometimes they were over explaining things. Purge kept really like digging in and like trying to really get into the guts of the game, and so was uh, Pyrian a little bit. But once they got their feet under them, it was actually really smooth. It was talking about some very specific things. Um, one fight would happen instead of jumping up to a second kill somewhere, they would just leave that kill the way it was and talk about what they just saw, so that you could really get a head around why a smoke gank is important and things like that. So it was uh, it was a really nice stream, and I liked it a lot. Now pairings, and they seem to have the pairing set up. So you're with the same partner all the way through the group stage and possibly into the main event, uh, depending on if they decide to realign or not. So the pairings right now are, it's going to be Toby Wan, always paired up with Cinderin or Lumi, uh, one of those two. We're going to have Aisi with Melk. Is that how you say his name? AC. It's, AC. It's, it's, like, it's, it's his initials. I don't know why I always say Aisi. Because that's but how it's spelled. It is. I like, spellability, I, dude. I like spelling, man. Spellability. So and then we got... <laughs> that cast was driving me insane, if you haven't. No, I didn't get a chance. I, I did comments. not watch it. <laughs> was it rough? It was not very good, and mm. it's not really. It was weird. They just kept. They started saying tank ability, and then mm. they just started saying escape ability and blank ability, and I don't know if it was like a joke <laughs> between them or, but it was terrible. And I don't know. I don't mind either of them. Too bad. Too much generally, but. I mean, they got, I don't they know got hung up on a joke. Today. And then, Maybe. uh, let's hope. So then LD is going to pair out with Sind or Lumi. Uh, Cap and Wag are going to be together. Merlini and Gods. Mott and Kotal Guy. Lysander and Base Kip. Uh, Blitz, Pyrion, and Shane. So they're actually doing a th tri cast on those together, which I think got a little bit garbled yesterday on the Noob channel. Uh, but it's hard not to when you do a tri cast. And finally, Suns Fan and Purge, who did a really great job over on the Noob channel yesterday. So any of those pairings, like a pairing that you are really excited to sit down and watch, or is it kind of a. Meh, these are all great casters. I'm just excited to see him put some work in. Uh, if I'm given a choice of which of those casting teams I'm watching, it's always going to be the Cap Waga, or mm -hmm. it's going to be God's Merlini. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think God's Merlini in particular do a really good job complementing each other. Like mm -hmm. I traditionally am not the biggest fan of Merlini's casting. I really mm -hmm. love his post-game analysis. I love yeah. his desk work. <laughs> His casting has never really done it for me unless he has a really strong play-by-play -play, uh, right. alongside him. 
Um, he just doesn't really show a lot of enthusiasm when he's casting, typically. Well, but but when he's going with gods, he I, 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 I don't know. I think that they complement each other very well. I think with gods, that's perfect, because gods has an incredibly strong play-by-play, -play, and he, Merlini gets to kind of sit casting couch style, or not casting couch, uh, color couch style, and just kind of feed in, which I really, really like. Um, and I think Mott Kotal guy's an interesting pairing, because I think that they have two of the stronger cameramen in that lineup together casting. So, uh, yeah, and obviously those guys work together a ton. Except right. for when Mott is the cameraman. <laughs> it gets really questionable. <laughs> the Summit had some uh, interesting camera work. But yeah, Mott, Mott does Mott not like generally, it. when he is casting, is really good at it. Right. I don't... Yeah, the... the <sighs> Camera work was interesting at the summit, but I think a lot of that came down to the fact that the communication was terrible between the couch and the camera. Uh, yeah, it and it, it, it was a lot of like the pros going, "Hey, go back to this thing," and that was a, I think that was a little rough for any cameraman to deal with. Um, that said, I don't know. I was watching the cast yesterday, and Toby kept taking control from someone, so I don't know if yeah, they've got it from Striff and Weppus. Like, okay. there's a new in-game tools that they can use a little bit. I was actually playing. Uh, mods with Scriff like the day before he left, like three hours before he was going to leave, okay. randomly. Uh, he was talking about it a little. So are they running? Are they, are they running dedicated cameramen in addition to the two casters, or are the casters controlling the camera? Yeah, there's dedicated camera. I don't know if it's just on the multi stream. Like if you mm. go to the one Twitch stream that's actually just English, I think maybe it's just Toby's point of view. But on the multi stream, like. Because you can see that someone's just watching it, right? Because you can see who's talking and the names right. popping up in Dota, as opposed to seeing the little white speech bubble, which would mean, sense. like, Toby's point of view. So there's a way for them to override each other. But I don't think it's just through in-game. I think it's uh, production magic. Fair enough. And I did see a picture of the uh, production room for tomorrow, and it's pretty impressive. Looks like the kind of thing you'd be seeing out of ESPN sports room. So uh, pretty excited about that. We already talked about yesterday's game. We talked about the but new I channel. I my casting. I want Toby Lumi uh, and LD Lumi. Those are the best for me. Toby Lumi, LD Lumi. Yeah, I like Lumi's assessment. He does a great job. I think it's he's easy. always great at TI, and then in between, mm -hmm. eh, I don't really care <laughs> for him. I think it's interesting that they put uh, they put the Toby to Toby the head of Join Dota with Lumi and Sind, and then they also put LD, arguably one of the heads of or the most visible members of BTS, with the same pairing. So it's almost like you get to do a uh, a direct comparison of the top dogs with the same analysis. <laughs> it's like a it's like a throwdown. I'm gonna watch him back to back and be like, hmm. Who is no stronger? Time. I think so and so had uh, stronger uh, voice work, but the analysis <laughs> was really on par. Such and such minute, yeah. Right. It's like it's like when you make a uh, it's like when you do a science project and you have to have the control and the control here is Sindalumi and the experiment is Toby LD who works best with them. So that'll be fun to watch. Um, so that's that's our picks for casters. That should be fun and I I, I think it's all good teams. Um, but I really like those the ones that we talked about. I think those are gonna be really really strong pairings. That said, uh, let's move into today and the schedule. I'm going to pull it up for you guys. Um, so it's a crammed, jam-packed day. Remember, all of these games are best of one. They start up in about five hours, sans 15 minutes. Um, and the first matchups we're going to see, and what I'll do is I'm going to read off the matchups from each set of four, and then I want you guys to think about what your picks are, and then we'll take a quick look over at the actual odds on uh, what things like Dota Lounge think is going to win. So first game out, Newbie LGD, Alliance Invictus Gaming. Fnatic and DK, and then Evil Geniuses versus Cloud9. Uh, of those games, which one do you guys think is going to be the game to watch? Shoot, shoot me with the link to, to, to play with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry. Too. Good idea. Let me throw that up there. Find it. I'm a failure. So uh, I've, got, I've got a different list than you do, I think. Really? In terms of order. I mean, not in terms of, like, my list is not chronological. My list is, like, well, who is grouped by who is doing what coverage yep. at Join Dota. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, right now, I'm just using the Go Gozu Gamers match ticker. It's pretty comfortably you, lined up. You would use Gozu instead of Join Dota when hey, you have a Join I, Dota senior staff on hand. I used Join Dota for a couple <laughs> of the other things today. I've got it pulled up for the uh, bracket breakdown. So I'm trying to be fair. Uh, plus, I can fit more Gozu games on my screen than I can Join Dota off of the ticker. So fix it. All right, and we'll use so you. for these top four that we're talking about, yep. I think Newbie is pretty... I It's a best of one, so anything can happen, but I think Newbie is pretty comfortable there. For Alliance versus Invictus Gaming, this is one of those matches that if I'm looking for an underdog match mm -hmm. that I think I can maybe pull a decent bet off on, I could see myself betting on Alliance and very well might. Not a whole lot. Like, I'm not willing to break the bank on that bet, but I think that Alliance could could pull an upset there in terms of odds. 
Um, DK, I think, has Fnatic, even though Fnatic has been playing pretty well. And Evil Geniuses, I think, is pretty squarely going to be ahead of Cloud9. All right, and what are your what do you what do you got there, Helium? Yeah, basically the same. Uh, yeah. Newbie over LGD. Uh, I think Alliance will take Invictus Gaming. Uh, the group stage is really important this time around, so I don't right. think Alliance is going to mess about and beating one of the strongest contenders. Like a lot of people think, IG could win it again, uh, like they did back in TI2. So Alliance should come out ahead there. That's probably gonna be the best game of the day. Yeah, uh, so. And DK over Fnatic, especially Fnatic's playing with Era as opposed to Excalibur. Um, I don't know, it could be, could maybe be beneficial, like Era's kind of different, a lot of people have started getting used to Excalibur, but yeah. it could also really backfire, probably easier <laughs> to backfire, mm -hmm. uh, and then EG over uh, Cloud9 for sure. Excellent. Yeah, I like the picks. I think it's going to be fun to see Era back in the lineup. So uh, picks to watch for the first round is really we're going to keep an eye. I, I'd want to watch... The multi-stream. Right? I mean, I want to watch Alliance Invictus. I think it's going to be a really good game. The U.S. rah-rah post-World Cup attitude I, uh, in me wants to watch EG versus Cloud9 so that I can feel a little bit of nationalism as it goes into it. Uh, <laughs> and then part of me wants to watch Fnatic because I want to see the, return, the triumphant return of Era. So uh, it's a lot of good games to start today, but I think I'll be watching EG Cloud9 nine um, and keeping an eye on Alliance on the side. So the beauty of Twitch is you can multicast yourself, which is always nice. So that's going to be lineups. As far as the numbers given over on the uh, what we think the winning winning losing percentages is listed on Gozu pulled through debt or uh, Dota Lounge is right now it's 80-20 newbie over LGD, which I think is a pretty fair one. Uh, sure. Ali Invictus is actually favored 57 to 43 over Alliance. So yeah, um, that doesn't surprise. I, me. I thought it would be a little bit closer than that, but I guess that's still fairly close in the grand scheme of well, things. People are just looking at ESL as a guideline, probably right. where Alliance had EGM drafting and just they played their best, but they didn't really use anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alliance kind of got thrown under the bus there for ESL. They, they, one of the things that they said afterward, um, I forget whom from Alliance said this, but somebody was like, yeah, we've got all these strategies. Like, we're not going to play our best at ESL. We, they're one of those teams that's mm -hmm. like, come on, we've got the international coming up. You really think we're going <laughs> to we're gonna focus on ESL? Mm -hmm. We'll they just play our normal strats. They got to be the first team to go back to back, man. They got to win. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So they're saving, but, you just think they might be saving those pockets. So if yeah. you were betting rares, is that the upset you'd look for in the first set of four? In the first set of four, if I if I had to pick an underdog to go for it, it would be Alliance, yeah, for sure. Overall. Well, based on the odds, though, you wouldn't because they're so close. Right. Like, you'd right. still bet for LGD because of the 80-20 split. Makes sense. Yeah, well, but I, I mean, I want to bet my rares on something that I think is remotely possible. Right. I don't see LGD mm -hmm. taking newbie. Um, I, I, I don't think those odds are strong enough in favor of newbie, quite honestly. Yeah, I also. Newbie true. has like a 95% win. Right. <laughs> it's a best of one, yeah. so once again, anything can happen, but I really don't see LGD... Yeah. That ahead. No, I mean, I think Newbie's one of those teams that's in the mix to win the whole thing, whereas LGD's, you know, I, just, they just want to make it to the main event. So, Fnatic is 36 to the DK 64. Um, once again, not a big surprise there. And then Evil Genius is 60 40 over Cloud9 uh, based on ESL. The question is did Eternal Envy finish a good cry and go back and put together some new strats to bring to this? And I think we'll find out up against the EG game. Yeah, uh, EG is a really strong contender. Mm. Cloud9 has not been that strong as of late. Um, I'll be interested to see what Cloud9 does because they were. There was a little while over the last year where Cloud9 was like, oh, this is going to be the tier one team to keep an eye yep. on for the West coming out. And then the new EG came out. And, uh, it, you know, that was before Navi Europe also started to. to to poop around a little bit too so the the scene has really shifted very significantly mm -hmm. over the last four months or so in a in a way that we don't normally see moving up to such a big event absolutely all right so let's move to the second round of games there's a lot of games today uh in the second grouping we're gonna have eg versus arrow we're gonna have empire versus titan vg versus mouse and uh it's gonna be navi us versus team liquid who just got in on the wild card um, interestingly enough, of that pairing, the uh, Team Liquid, the wild card play-in, is 58-42 to 42 over Na'Vi NA, who he was, I mean, North American Rejects, and they beat them in the qualifiers. Uh, do you think that that's a fair assessment of what the, where that game's going to go? Of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's another one of those ones that I'm, I'm, I might bet on if I'm looking for an underdog that, that can take it. I mean, uh, I, I don't have the stats pulled up, but at least up until the time of the qualifiers, Navi US um, had the ability to take Liquid on a fairly regular basis. They took most of their matches against Liquid 
up to that point mm -hmm. um, globally, like across tournaments. Uh, and Liquid had the ability to to beat Sneaky Nick's Assassins, and Sneaky Nick's Assassins had the ability to beat Navi US. So it was a weird like rock paper scissors situation. Um, so I can I, I could see Navi US potentially taking that, but I, I don't think that it's unfair to give Liquid the advantage. What were you saying, Helium? I think that you were. Yeah, I mean, obviously we can say Narvi beat them in the NA qualifiers, right. but I think Team Liquid's prepared a little bit more. Like, they probably weren't prepared at all for the NA qualifiers, even mm -hmm. though, like, they're still so important. I feel like a lot of teams weren't super prepared for it. Obviously, a lot were not. Um, so, yeah, Team Liquid, I think, just with their experience, uh, should be good. And their, their versatility, right? Like, Demon plays almost every role. Bulba plays almost every role. Like, they can easily switch it up and... Most, like, history would say in Dota, that's not really a good thing, but I, I think in this patch it probably is. Yeah, so, so I, I just, I did just look up the stats. For May, all the way back to the beginning of May, up until the last section of the International Qualifiers, NAR hadn't lost a match. Mm. Against um, so, like, they, they have a really good play history against Liquid. Um, they've only lost, like, I think two matches against them, or two, not matches, games. Mm -hmm. Only two games against them in their history. Uh, out of 11. I think it's two. might be three. So they've got a really good win rate up against Liquid here. Um, I, I, I do think that they are, they could potentially take that. Um, and that could be another one of those ones that guys who are looking for a nice little side bet on Dota 2 Lounge could, be, could, could go for, for some decent odd breaking. Absolutely. I agree with that. So other games, I mean, the Vici Mouse Sports is 4456, which I think uh, is could go either way. That's another interesting game. Arrow, Arrow versus EG is probably the biggest. Uh, it's set 27% Arrow, 73 Evil Geniuses, and I think that lines up about where I expect it to. Yeah. Now, it, 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 is Arrow going to come out and show off this sort of SEA gaming like we saw MVP do yesterday is the question. Do they have a bunch of pocket strats that they've been keeping hidden to really win some of these early rounds? Um, I don't know, but they're going to need it to really go up against EG. So if you want an upset bet, that's going to be your bet. Uh, though I don't see it very likely. And then obviously Empire versus Titan is a pretty even game, 42 to 58. Of those four, which is the one that you are going to watch? Uh, well, I'll, I'll probably be flipping amongst them. Um, honestly, I'll probably have a NAR bet, uh, bet like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Like out, out of this grouping, I'll probably put something down on NAR because they're underdogs that I think can win. So um, between doing work, if I've, if I've got time, I'll probably be flipping over to Liquid and Natus Vincere. And what about you, Helium? Which one do you think? Uh, we're just saying. I know we're all going to watch all four because that's our that's the way that we yeah, live our yeah. lives. So I'll skip that part. I'm going to say Titan versus Team Empire. Mm. Like back when TI4 was starting to get talked about, was when Empire was dominating. Everyone's like, these guys are going to win TI4. Well, a little <laughs> bit of time has passed. They definitely look good. They did well at Star Ladder, but I don't think people quite think that anymore. And Titan. I don't know. They're the strongest team in the Southeast Asian scene for sure, but they seem weak when compared to most of the other regions. And I recently watched the documentary. It was pretty good. Um, surprise. Their parents aren't too thrilled with them playing video games, but when they started <laughs> winning money, they were like, right. oh, maybe it's okay. Right. Uh, but So it'll be a big win for them, and I hope they can at least make it to the main stage. That would be I like Titan as I did a team. Too. Um, and, uh, I mean, that comes from I, I did a huge stint of Southeast Asia Dota casting for like a month and a half. I did exclusively basically mm -hmm. North American tier three and like community tier and tier one Southeast Asia because there aren't a ton of English casters for that region um, and people just needed caster fill ins a lot. So I, I and actually ended up covering them a ton over the last year and came to like their, their play style. I think that Titan is one of those teams that does not necessarily play that well compared to a lot of the other tier one teams globally. Right. What they do do is they, they bring out a lot of subtle meta, meta shifts. Like, they were involved in the Lycan shift, for example, that came about. You know, like, they, they like to do that push. And, I don't know, for a Southeast Asian team, I find that they've got an interesting style. So Sounds good. So it sounds like our pick to watch, best game of the four, is going to be Titan Team Empire as far as close goes. If you want to watch for an upset, Natus Vincere versus Team Liquid, U.S. versus U.S. Violence uh, should be a good game as well. So moving to the third slot, we're going to have uh, Fnatic versus Natus Vincere, the Navi, the real, I don't want to say the real Navi, but the OG Navi. <laughs> well, you did. Uh, 49 to 51. We're going to have Arrow against Cloud9, 45 to 55. LG versus DK, and this is a very interesting percentage 
damage comparison, 62 LG to 38 DK. And then finally, what? Uh, inv that's what I said, Invictus 2971 newbie. So uh, if the stats stay that way, I think the bet for that round is going to be the DK. LGD Team DK. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. going to be a huge payoff if they upset. And it, it doesn't even sound like it'd be that big of an upset for them to, to pull off. Uh, yeah, like... Maybe, like, not a lot of people have voted on that yet. Yeah, that seems like maybe that's Ooh. one of those ones that you want to get in on right now while I actually, we're talking. Because... I actually just went over there, and right now it is... It has changed dramatically. So it's DK84 and LG16. So Yeah, I was going to say, I would sense. have DK pegged at... So, so I'm pretty sure the the Gosu gamers stats. By the way, I don't think that they're the, are they dragged directly from. I don't. Uh, think they, they have are. an internal I think it's betting. Their own system. betting. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. They, they, you can bet like carrots or something like some. Either way, that one's. I just refresh and it's 60-40 for LGD, so that one's changing pretty quickly too. Right. Is it? That that's just one that there was like three people on Gosu right. gamers who had voted, and so but DK, once again, that's that is probably, out of all the teams that are pegged like. This this team like IG some people are like oh they could win it again the whole tournament but I think DK is probably the strongest mm -hmm. showing Asian team moving in I'd be really surprised if they <clears throat> drop more than even a single game in the group stages yeah absolutely so what I'll do is I'll, I'm going to keep checking uh, Dota two lounge as we go through just to be sure on some of the matchups but game to watch in that grouping which one are you guys going to want to put your primary camera on. I think DKIG will be a really good game. I mm -hmm. think that, that, and it will be an indicator of what's going on. Or what are we talking about? Or, or it's LG. DK LGD. See, that makes even more less sense to me that it was sixty-two. I just filled in yeah. IG while you guys were talking. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, IG's up against newbie just beneath that. Gotcha. I I muddled up. No, that's not going to be nearly as good of a game as I no. as I had originally anticipated. I, IG newbie is probably my match. Okay, I think I'll be going to go Arrow Cloud Nine. Really. And I think Toffees is probably going to say Fnatic Natus. I am going to say Fnatic Navi. Yeah. So I think it's a really closely paired match. I think with the return of Era, it'll be interesting. So it'll be my first chance to watch Era because I will for sure not be watching that first game. And um, I think it'll. I think that should be a pretty good one, depending on how how he's back in the mix. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it, that is the thing too. It's really risky to be thinking about betting on Fnatic right now because they do have that switch up. Like they've been playing mm -hmm. with Excalibur and they're not playing with him now. Um, they've been doing really, really well, so normally they would be a team that I would look at a lot of their matches and say, this is a team that's been playing really well. Right. They're going to be ranked as underdogs in a lot of these matches. I can probably pull quite a few items off of some of their wins, but because they had that roster shift just before TI, they're, I don't know, a little bit less. I'm, I'm, I'm less confident in running them as that underdog sweep, you know? Right, absolutely. Uh, now we'll move on to the next one just because we got a lot of games to get through. It's going to be uh, next round, and I'll read them off, then you make your picks on which one you think you should watch as far as good games going to be concerned. It's going to be Alliance versus Titan, Navi versus VG, Fnatic versus Navi US, and Empire versus Mouse. Uh, Fnatic Narvi. That's, that's my pick out of that match. Uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty good. What about you, Helium? Any choice? Uh, maybe it just to be different. Uh, VG versus Navi EU. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be a pretty good one if they're pretty close to the match. Yeah. In shape, potentially. And that's the thing is, I think Navi's been keeping a lot of stuff kind of to themselves, so I look forward to see them come out in this one. I think they've been throwing for a year straight to mm -hmm. prepare for this event. <laughs> <laughs> they've been looking for that true up and coming. Uh, right now, Navi is 59 41 over VG for that particular game. Alliance is 75 to 25 Titan, which I think is probably about where it should be. Fnatic Navi US is interesting. It's seventy-one to twenty-nine. And I think there's a huge upset potential there. Yeah, I, I agree. I do think that there's a huge upset potential there, especially considering the Fnatic roster thing that we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. So something to keep in mind, guys, if you want to put a bet on the eight-hour mark, I think that Navi Fnatic might be the um, value bet if that makes sense. So keep an eye on that one. Next grouping in the nine hours from now. Keep in mind, this is four games every hour today. It's going to be kind of ridiculous. About an hour and a half, actually, I think is what the breakdown comes to. But it's going to be Alliance versus Newbie, which I think is going to be a dynamite game. I'm just going to say it now. Liquid versus DK, Cloud9 versus Titan, and LGD versus EG. Which game are you watching? I'll let Healing go first, because I've been dominating first pick. Yeah, he's like, I woke up for this, and Gorgon won't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trait of Gorgon. Um, <laughs> it's tight, Titan Cloud Nine, I think. Again, mm. just like, I, I want to watch Internal Envy lose, and I want to watch Titan win. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it would, I, you know, it's definitely a possibility. The stats are barely in the favor of Cloud9 right now. So um, I definitely think that it could be a nice upset there. The Alliance newbie game, though, I mean, it's going to be, that's going to be a tight one. And what are you going to watch, Cal? Oh, I'll probably throw down Alliance newbie. I think that that is probably my pick for that grouping. Though, uh, honestly, none of those games really grab me. Like, oh, I've got to watch that. So maybe that's going to be my catch-up on work hour. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a quiet hour. Nothing massive. So we'll jump to the next one. It's going to be uh, Navi US versus LGD. Or Narvi. Well, it's, Narvi's much easier. Narvi versus LGD. Navi EU versus Mouse. VG versus Empire. And IG versus Arrow. Um, which one do you want to watch out of those? Navi Mouse Sports. How does, oh, this is Gosu, but on 5% for mouse sports, like, that's not possible. <laughs> it's on, on Dota 2 Lounge, that's 68.32. Mm -hmm. uh, that's better. That, yeah, that's one of those ones, once again, that it's like, uh, mouse hasn't been playing that well lately, but neither has Navi EU, maybe? I, I, no, I'm Navi not going to have fanboys that carry them in the vote, so, right. yeah. on Dota 2 Lounge. That is right. true. So, yeah, I think mouse is looking, I mean, has been looking pretty good. Depending on whether or not you like you said it's true, Navi's been throwing for a year to get ready for this. Um, I I don't know. I think that'd be a good place to put a bet and probably a pretty good game to watch. Yeah, I I, I think that that's probably my pick as well. Uh, not not to just follow in his footsteps, but it, it's either that or VG Empire for me. Okay, so eleven hours from now, this is crazy. How many hours of Dota we've got There's coming? There's so many games. It's ridiculous, right? And this is gonna be the next three days, guys. So uh, <laughs> enjoy it. We're gonna basically tell you which games we think is worth watching and which games you might want to put a bet on, just because I think it's the most people are interested in. And then uh, obviously, I mean, should we do them all, or should we just stop at day one? Uh, we're still on day one right now, so we're just going to stick right. to day one today, and we're almost done. We're in the last set, I think, and then uh, tomorrow I'll be talking about day two. So the the last matchups 11 hours from now is going to be, uh, I think it's the last ones, IG versus DK, EG versus Fnatic, Mouse versus Cloud9, and then Newbie versus Liquid. Which of those games do you want to keep an eye on? Uh, IG, DK. I mean, that's, yeah, that's the match of the day, I mm -hmm. think, quite honestly. Absolutely. So that and that's going to be, I think, the best match. It's very. It, I mean, you can probably watch a couple of the other matches before that match gets up and running, potentially. As far as uh, they're going to probably go late game. I don't think either of those games are going to be running push. Yeah, the, I mean, they're both well, I classic China. Really likes push, so I don't know. And a best of one. So yeah, it's uh, the end of the day too. I, I mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see any of these games start going early. The later the day There's goes, two more sets, by there the is way. two more sets. Yeah, I just noticed that. That's like literally how many games there are. Is Dat Dota's not even running numbers on those last two yet? So uh, it's going to be late in the day, though. I mean, these guys are coming off of. I think it's that's the fifth grouping of games. Is it? Um, two, it's eleven hours from now, starting five to so six seven. grouping of games. Yeah, that's their seventh game of the day. Uh, as far as slots go, they've probably taken a break here or there, but that's still a pretty heavy duty push. It's fifty four to six forty six IG seems pretty right to me. Um, as far as upsets or possible votes, there, I don't, I don't think Liquid's going to upset Newbie. Uh, I think Mouse Cloud Nine is too close to really put any work into betting on. Um, so I think it's just sit down for me, watch IGDK, and not worry about betting anything. The question is, Fnatic thirty one sixty nine can Fnatic upset EG? I'm, I mean, I I think they can. It's mm -hmm. it's a best of one. I don't think that they're so outclassed by EG that they could not win a match. I don't expect them to, um, especially with the with Excalibur gone and the communication issues that might result from that. Um, Wait, what are everyone's we talking about? rested at this event, unlike yeah. Star Ladder, where EG came in and Bridget lagged and just lost out, you know? Right. Obviously, right. that affected them because they did well at the other tournaments. So, I don't know. I think Fnatic could potentially take that. I, I am not as convinced that that is worth dropping rares on. Maybe a couple of heavy uncommons, you know? Mm. And try to pull something out on that, but uh, it's, it's not on the top of my list of things to bet on, for sure. So, and we'll skip bet on the last two rounds as uh, I don't know exactly which way they're going to go as Dad Dota hasn't put them up yet. Uh, but just, just pick our games to watch. It's going to be Alliance versus Arrow, VG versus Titan, Cloud9 versus Narvi, and Navi versus Empire. Uh, I will be watching probably Navi versus Empire in that, in that grouping. Yeah, that's what I would say. So that's a, that's a three-caster vote for you to keep an eye on that game. Um... Uh, as it goes. Game of the day, boys. <laughs> game of the day. That's our, That's That should be actually probably a pretty good game of the day. They both have a very similar style of play. Quick Just and that aggressive. region clashing. Yeah. 
for the first time, I guess. And it'll be a lot of fun. So last games of the day, the wrap-ups after they've been doing it uh, all freaking day. It's a lot to do. They're going to be Alliance versus DK, Newbie versus Fnatic, EG versus the uh, Liquid, and Arrow versus LGD. Which one are you going to watch? Uh, yeah. You know, DK I'm, Alliance. I'm, really, I'm really not sure in that group. I think DK Alliance is probably the way to go. Um, it really depends on how Alliance is doing today. I think, quite honestly, like if, they, if they're still if they're back up in form and if they're playing like Alliance from TI three and really on the on the game, um, kind of the way they have been playing lately. Yeah, DK Alliance is the way to go. If they're kind of schlepping around a little bit, then maybe yeah. watch one of the the closer ranked games down in the more mid area of the group stage. I agree with that. I think Alliance DK are two teams that are slated to be in that winner's bracket, possibly take it home, and this could be a preview of what's to come, because getting the win for either of those teams against those two teams is going to be huge for the seeding. So I think Alliance and DK, if there's anything that they were kind of keeping to themselves, we could potentially see it pulled out during that particular game. Yeah. So as, a, as the seeding is going to be really important going out of the group stage, if you can get into that uh, winner's bracket right out of the gate, that is good news for you because it means you can sit back and watch all of your opponents um, struggle to get in and see a lot of their strategies going into those $10 million games. So those are, uh, those, those are your picks. Those are our picks for the day. In the interest of time, we'll move past that. There is a, there's a copious amount of Dota being played right now. And it is exciting. So uh, we do a quick update for you guys on news that you need to know, things that are pretty interesting. Well, first and foremost, thing you need to know is the worst, uh, well, I want to say one of the worst upsets, worst games in World Cup history happened yesterday. I know Helium was watching it. What would you think about Brazil versus Germany? Too easy for Germany, dude. <laughs> right? That was ridiculous. But Germany man. was my pick the whole way through, and it always is. Like When I started watching, uh, I guess I'll just say football, because it's that time of the the year, every four years. Uh, I was in Germany in 2006 on like a German immersion program, mm -hmm. so that was a lot of fun. So Germany is my team. Obviously, I cheered heavily for the U.S. because that's where I lived. But uh, I expected them to win. Didn't expect it to be 7-0 until the 90th minute. Uh, right. That was a bit. It was like sad to watch. It was 5-0, 29 minutes in. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely rough. It is. Uh, I, I know at the end of the game they asked the German fans to remain in the stadium so they could escort them yeah. out for safety reasons. Uh, Brazil was devastated over the loss. All I saw was Twitter feed pictures of agony, pictures like fa bad, faces you know, of agony. Game references. Yeah. <laughs> there was. There was a ton of GG. Uh, it was pretty entertaining, to be honest. It was nice, though, to be honest, in my opinion, that it happened at 24 minutes that it was pretty much guaranteed a loss because I could go right back to watching TI and not feel bad about it. So uh, that's how that went down. The second semifinal is today at 4 o'clock on ESPN, Netherlands versus Argentina to see who advances. I put my pick on the Netherlands, and it's going to be a Netherlands-Germany final is what I'm calling right now. Gossip <clears throat> Horshiever, Netherlands. Right? She's uh, hard. I feel bad that she's got to sit on the multicast panel. She probably has her phone up in her hand and she's trying to watch that stream at the exact yeah, same time. Yeah, they'll probably talk about it too. Maybe. I'm, I don't know. I mean, her, her, her webcam on her actual stream has had nothing but orange flags for the last uh, couple, almost a month now. So I would, it would be hard-pressed to see her doing anything otherwise. But uh, that is the World Cup news for you. Interesting news that's worth talking about because it's in completely insane. Uh, you guys have heard about the potato salad Kickstarter, I am sure. Uh, because you keep mentioning oh. it. Uh, okay, so I, pu I pulled it up on the stream. A gentleman named Zach Danger Brown started a Kickstarter to make potato salad. He basically was, I'm just going to make potato salad, man. I don't even know what kind I'm going to make. He actually wrote that. His stretch goal started at $35, and he said at $35, bucks, i am going to make four times as much potato salad. Well, the stretch goal jumped up to $3,000, and he said at $3,000, my kitchen's too small. I'll get a big party hall and invite the whole internet to come watch me make potato salad. Uh, anybody who pays $10 or more will be allowed into the kitchen. All right? So that's where he was at yesterday. It went viral. He is now up to, I shit you not, part of my French, I kid you not, $58,000, almost $59,000 uh, in his Kickstarter so far of internet backers giving $10 a piece to be in the kitchen for the potato salad party. So the moral of the story is if you come up with a Kickstarter idea, no matter how ridiculous it is and the internet loves it, 
you can get a ton of cash. So he is, uh, I can't imagine he's been more than, say, $30,000 throwing a party. Uh, it's going to make a whole lot of extra money off of this thing. Yeah, well, that, that's just another case of the internet loves liking things <laughs> ironically, and the right? internet has too much money. That's, that's exactly that's it. The rule of thumb. I was cracking up. I showed my wife when he hit $10,000 yesterday. Uh, we were driving back from uh, Indiana, and I was like, check it out. This kid's got like ten grand for making potato salad, and it's literally up to almost 59000 today. So am I <laughs> – I guess in the – I'm no longer as surprised that the TI prize pool has gotten as big as it is when uh, this guy can make $58,000 for potato salad. Uh, I'm surprised salad. he's made fifty five grand after that, and that's already poured out uh, $40 million for TA4. <laughs> right? So uh, that is, I was thinking this his name is Zach Danger Brown. Uh, but it's worth checking out if you guys go over to Kickstarter. You can see it. Uh, his his descriptions of what's happening is pretty funny. I think that's why he's got so many backers is he's just been taking it in stride and made hats for everybody. Um, and it should be a pretty entertaining party to go to. So $58,000 of 24 days left to go. Will the internet keep funding his potato salad yet to be seen? Now, in more serious news, and we can talk pretty quickly about this since it's stuff I think most of us are aware of, things you need to know for your day – at the water cooler to sound super smart, whether it's at the water cooler or a teacher or a summer program. Immigration is a huge issue right now. Uh, yesterday, President Obama here in the U.S. asked for $3.7 billion, billion to deal billion dollars to deal with the flood of immigrants coming into Texas. Uh, chances are Congress is going to say no. No surprise there. And uh, <laughs> right, so that's a lot of money. The question is: Is he going to use an executive order to do it? And uh, is how is that going to affect the coming election year? So Republicans are saying uh, they're actually threatening to sue the president right now, which is pretty interesting. I'm curious to see how that goes. It's like the response a fourth grader makes, right? When they don't like to, I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna sue you. <laughs> I'm sure there's there's great legal basis for it, but right. it just sounds like like. Mm. It, it, it does just sound like something that a fourth grader says to you when they're unhappy about something you're doing. Like, I'm going to call my mom and dad. I don't care. Well, I'm going to sue you. Yeah. I, I just noticed in Twitch chat, for those of you who uh, are maybe watching this on YouTube, one of our regulars here, the Fridge Master, wrote into the show and said that he actually pledged for the potato salad. So he's excited about it. Uh, I thought we should throw that back up. But it's going to be a pretty interesting immigration showdown, so keep an eye on that. Uh, those of you who are uh, U.S. citizens, the rest of you just know that our government's crazy. Um, secondly, looking at overall world politics right now, Israel and Gaza, even more attacks going back and forth between the two, sparked by a couple of murders and missing kids. Um, this is now something even bigger. Palestinians say they have no political affiliation with what's going on. But uh, Gaza is, I mean, there are missiles coming out of both sides right now, and uh, it is something that is firing up. I don't know if you guys remember, but it was early 2000s. Um, there was a lot of rocket attacks going back and forth between the two sides, and it sort of has let off over the last few years, um, and is starting back up now. So people will most likely be, t I mean, depending on who you hang out with, people may be talking about this um, and what it means for Middle Eastern stability. Do you guys have any opinions or insights on that you want to share? About Middle Eastern stability, there, there is. Yeah, well, let me just crack into my uh, my my very in-depth knowledge of, of Gaza. Of his other writing job on uh, Middle Eastern politics. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a few years since I've been into been into that sort of thing. No, I I mean it's just not a very it's not a very stable region. I, I it's a Dota show. I don't want to get too much into it, but like the politics or whatever. But yeah, it doesn't seem like that know. conflict is uh, going away anytime soon. Right. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's not I just too figured surprising that it's flared back up. But just figured I'd ask you guys. Case. You know, I just want to give you a chance to. Device. Sound off if you want. It is primarily a Dota show. That said, though, I think it's important that uh, real-world issues are discussed. That way you sound even more smart. And it is, you know, it's just part of the morning show format is to make more sure that you smarter. guys get a little stuff. Gonna, more smarters. I am going to, now that this issue has started to flare up, take Gaza Strip Dota out of my lexicon because that is something mm -hmm. that I sometimes That's a good call point. out. That is a good when point. I have, uh, when I have clockwork goblins and tinkers throwing rockets back and forth. Oh, it's called that Gaza Strip Dota. Not going to do it while there's actual rockets flying. It's not PC yeah. anymore. It's definitely yeah. not PC. I don't know that it ever was, but if definitely ever. even less than it used to be. <laughs> I, I used to be able to slide away with it, you know, and people were like, oh, you know, a lot of Dota fans are youngins, and in the 2000s they were <laughs> like nine, so I don't really remember what's going on. So I'm going to I'm gonna slightly remove that one. Just Tone suddenly. it down. So something a little less heavy duty. LA Clippers, uh, the billionaire Donald Sterling, had his day in court yesterday. Um, he was basically Did saying, he I love... 
yeah, and he said, I love my wife, and blah, 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 and then she shouldn't be allowed to sell the team. So he basically said, I love her to death. Why is she <laughs> doing this to me? Even though this whole thing came up because I was at a game with my mistress. So uh, I don't know. Maybe that's just something the rich do. <laughs> I can't seem to compute it, that uh, it's the way that it's going down. But at the end of the day, just so you guys know, his wife is trying to sell the team for $2 billion dollars. Two, that's right, two billion dollars when they bought it for a couple million. Uh, I think it was like six or to ten years ago. We so a huge profit. Money for the immigration bill. How ironic would that be? That would be incredibly <laughs> ironic. <laughs> oh man, uh, what, I I think it's all a ploy, right? Mm -hmm. You 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 have this big fight in the media, and then you try to sell it for like a thousand percent what it's worth. Oh, yeah. And uh, then they'll split the money in a back room somewhere. That's what's going on. It sure all, seems that way. Yeah, like. I don't even know why he's got to be like, well, I don't know why she's trying to sell the team. Like, if she can sell for $2 billion, just just let her. Yeah. I mean, I think... <laughs> Wrangle that out of somebody. I think he's just trying to save face by being like the, the addled old man. You know, oh, I made the remarks because I'm crazy. Let me now be a little bit crazy in court. So that's what's going on there. And then last but not least, uh, storms all across the East Coast and uh, the Midwest taking a lot of power out. I know one of, my, one of the guys from my actual Dota team lost power last week over in Michigan and still has not gotten it or no, I'm sorry Wisconsin and say, still has happens. not he still hasn't gotten it back so it is uh. it is sunny and beautiful here in Ann Arbor Michigan and that is a <laughs> rare statement for me to say so. that really is Ann Arbor such a such a cute little town it uh, is uh, a cute little town that mm -hmm. is rainy every seven minutes mm -hmm. for three minutes so you know well that's where you choose to live. But uh, <laughs> storms all across the East Coast. Uh, a couple people died in Manchester, as well as three people in Syracuse, New York, which is interesting to me because I actually drove through Syracuse yesterday and uh, stopped or had did just you passed hit somebody it. Somebody with a car? Is that no, is no. That death I did pull off the street and went and stayed in a motel because the weather got so bad I just wasn't willing to drive through it. So uh, that makes me more glad. Is Manchester in because I can think of like four states on the East Coast with a Manchester. Uh, Maryland, it looks like Manchester. Maryland. Okay. So that is it's not at, uh, the one that I would have gone to. So that I'm is not the one I would have guessed. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah. It looks like nine. So <laughs> that's actually a really sad story. A storm pushed a tree over and it landed on nine children at a church camp in Manchester, wow. Maryland. Wow. Uh, one of them died Coffee under its with weight. Start your day the bright way. You go <laughs> <into a slogan laughs> yeah. Dark nine coffee children are dead. Coffees. I mean, it's it's the news, man. What do you want from me? When the news gets positive, I'll get positive. But what can you do? So those are the things that you need to know to get your day up and running. We ran through all of the uh, picks for games to watch today. It was a long one, and I expect that it will continue to be for the next week as TI is going to be uh, a lot to digest. But hopefully the guide will help you make some picks on uh, bets as well as games. Do you guys have any closing comments or remarks as we wrap up the show for today? Um, Silence, Dad. All Lord. right, so let, let's do it this way. Gorgon, how about you give us a bit of an outro before you head out for the afternoon? Hey, um, so there's a lot of Dota games today. You should watch them, and if you're at work or too busy or you want to keep up on the Dota games that are going on while you're watching one specific game and you don't want to use the multi-hub, stop by, join Dota, because we are, of course, trying to make sure we've got all of our top writers doing... Uh, the live recaps of games and text forms so you can load it up on your phone and stuff and we'll be putting out stuff for every one of these groupings we'll be putting out summaries as as the groupings finish and basically we'll have all of your dota news so that if you can't watch the games or don't want to watch all the games at one time you can still know what's going on Excellent. Uh, great outro from the editor-in-chief of two companies over well, I'm not, at HG. I, I don't, don't want to go editor Well, you're, te you're, I'm, I'm you're just, temporary, I'm, though, right? Yeah, you're officially I'm, a temporary EIC. We're going to uh, give it to you. It's, it's complicated. I'm, I'm, I am co-working, <laughs> organized. We don't really have an editor-in-chief at Joint Dota. All right, so the, uh, the editor-in-chief. I don't want to like, piss anybody off by being like, yeah, I'm the editor-in-chief when a enough. lot of people are working really hard. So. Fair enough. So we've got the editor-in-chief of High Ground TV as well as the theoretical editor of Join Dota in Gorgon joining us today. And uh, any parting thoughts or outro from you, Helium? I'm not doing any work for TI4, <laughs> except for this show. Hey, I've got some work for you if you want to. Uh, no, no <laughs> over to me. I've got plenty to overflow. I'll be, I'll be casting a lot plus TI4 and hopefully casting TI5 if it happens. So you, you should get used to me. You can just follow me on Twitter. 
at Healy Umbrella, which Toffees has butchered completely in the title of the stream. Well, I'm, you could have told me early. I'm a bad speller. What do you want I from me? I honestly just looked at it. Oh my gosh, he's close he enough. Right Healy Umbre- you take, know, when he said that, take out some letters. when he said that at the top of the cast, when he when he pronounced it like that, I I almost said something like, you know, you can just you can roll right through. It's Healy Umbrella. It's not Helium Umbrella. But uh, now I realize he, he legitimately thought that it was Helium Umbrella. I, it's a dumb it's, handle, but it's unique. Helium's always taken. That's true. It's not a dumb handle, man. We support you. We love you. Uh, so that said, uh, follow. Yeah, that's all I got. Follow him. He's a defic- he's officially declared himself as uh, as part of the hashtag Road to T- Road to Ti Five Crew now. I think in saying that, so uh, we're gonna push for it. We're gonna get it. If you like what we're doing, follow me at Toffees underscore Dota Two. I'm here almost every single morning unless something crazy happens. Um, bringing you the best in Dota news as well as other news that you need to know for your day. Uh, this has been Coffee with Toffees, a morning show for gamers by gamers, and uh, I am going to play us out with a song by Modest Yahoo, a little thing called Sunshine, and you can enjoy that as we roll forward here. But as always, thanks for joining us, and Toffee's out.